In this edition of Proven to Work, they can think for themselves, but they can do it much better in groups. We'll be seeing how collaborative inquiry can be structured in the classroom to stimulate imagination and improve thinking. We'll also be hearing from one of the country's top experts in education research, who will tell us why it's proven to work. Now you are going to discuss with your group what you think it's a photograph of. These year three and four pupils have been placed in groups to consider a mystery picture and answer three questions. I think it's something from inside, of, inside someone's body. It might be just something that's very um, ancient. What I'm trying to do is to get the children to uh, think deeper at the beginning of a lesson. I'm looking for their inquiry skills and getting them to work in mixed ability groups. I find that the children are kind of feeding off one another's ideas and really starting to think deeper. Can you just jot down your group ideas about these three questions? Is it the inside of a jellyfish? I just find that they're more open-minded to the lesson that that's leading into and they are more creative in their work and it's a good way to get them working together as a group, get along with each other. Do you want to let Henry do a little bit of the writing now as well and then we're all having a little go? What was your question, Henry? Is it from the past? Is it from the past? Excellent. We've used objects that the children have brought in. We've used... Um, images like that one. We've also used what-if questions, what if all door handles were chocolate, those kind of things. A whole manner of different openers and starters just to get the children thinking and giving them time to think as well and think as a group and share their ideas as a group. So Henry, could you, from your group, please, what's something that you wanted to find out about that photograph? Is it from a human body? Is okay. it from space? Has it been magnified, which Josh was just writing when you stopped? Excellent. Has it been magnified? Really, really good questions there. Well done. When Mark brought that stone in the other day, it looked similar to that, and I think it's one of those rocks that's been cut out in a cave. It could be. It could be a rock, Olivia. Well done. The lesson is bringing together two processes, which could also be used in secondary schools, according to Philip Accordingly, director of the Centre for the Use of Research and Evidence in Education. She's pulling together things we know from research that matter about how you structure group work and things uh, about how you structure inquiry and embed it in the curriculum to make a learning activity that, that's both deep and, and wide, but also where the responsibility for the learning is transferring from her as a teacher to the students themselves. So, those sequences of questions like, you know, is it magnified, is it real, is it historical? I mean, a series of really good, well-structured inquiry questions coming from the students themselves shows that she really is handing over the responsibility to the learners. This is a piece of agate, but it's been highly magnified. So what else do we know in nature that grows from the ground the more it grows, the more lines are there. Henry? Three. Excellent, well done. As the waters and minerals have dropped, they've built up and built up in different colours. She's obviously been teaching this, these, this class to work together in groups this way. Uh, she says she's using these as starters regularly to keep that kind of thinking going. And then she's able to, to build on that sort of springboard she's made to use in different and ever more demanding tasks. So she's kind of got a foundation of inquiry skills and group skills that then means she can add to the demand each time. There's more information on collaborative inquiry and the research behind it on the Teachers TV website. <laughs>